This video goes with Year 12 Physics, Module 2, Foundations of Physics, Lesson 1, and looks at SI base units and derived quantities. So you should know that a physical quantity is anything that contains both a numerical value and a unit. So a really simple example would be acceleration due to gravity, which on Earth is always 9.81 meters seconds to the minus 2. So this is a physical quantity because it has both a number and a unit, and we can measure it. So it's a measured quantity with both a number and a unit. So there are seven SI base units. So this includes mass, uh, len length or distance, time, temperature, electrical current, amount of substance and lastly um, luminosity so these are our seven SI base units and each one has a unit that is well defined um, under uh, the conventions of the Système International. so for example mass is always measured in physics in kilograms OK, one point to notice about this, which is, makes it slightly unique, is it's the only one of the base units which includes within it a prefix, which is kilo. And obviously kilo stands for 10 to the power 3. So, uh, but kilogram is the SI unit, not gram. Length is in metres. Time is always in seconds rather than minutes or hours. Temperature or specifically absolute temperature, is measured in Kelvin, which is a capital K. So zero Kelvin corresponds to uh, minus 273 degrees C. Uh, so if I want to go from Kelvin to degrees C, I minus it, and if I want to go from degrees C to Kelvin, I add 273. Uh, electrical current is measured in amperes. Amount of substance is measured in moles and luminosity is mentioned me measured in candelas so for the first module the three these three will be the most important as you go into year 13 we'll look more at temperature and when we do electricity we'll look at current again year 13 we look at amount of substance quite a lot when we do gases luminosity is the one we talk about the least and the fact that it is a candela is what you really need to know so from these quantities, any quantity that doesn't have one of these units has what we call a derived quantity. So an example would be um, force. So force um, is, in the equation, is mass times acceleration. So what I can do is I can write this instead as the unit of force is the unit of mass times the unit of acceleration. So first of all, the unit of mass we know, which is kilograms, as we can see from there, but acceleration is um, not included uh, on this list. So acceleration in itself has a derived unit. So let's just, before we finish this force example, let's have a look at acceleration. Acceleration is Final velocity minus initial velocity, V minus U, divided by T. So that means the units of acceleration are going to be the units of V, the final velocity, minus the unit of U, divided by the unit of time. Now, velocity in itself also has a derived unit. So if I look at velocity, which is the equation displacement divided by time, or the rate of change of displacement, because when something is divided by time, that means rate. The unit of velocity is the unit of displacement divided by time. Now, just to be clear, in this equation, velocity, S is displacement, not speed. So just to be very clear about that, S is displacement, which is distance in a direction. So since displacement is a type of distance, we know the unit of that is meters, and we know the unit of time is seconds. 
So we don't write it like this. We write it as meters. And then because this is divided by seconds, it's seconds to the minus one. So we now have a derived unit for velocity, which is meters per second. We can now include that in this equation. So we have velocity minus velocity. Well, velocity is meters per second, and initial velocity is meters per second. Time is in seconds. So you do velocity meters per second divided by time. And, and that will give you uh, the derived quantity for acceleration, which I'll just write here, which is meters per second to the minus two. It's because time, sorry, I put T there, I should say seconds. So this is seconds to the minus one, but it's already seconds to the minus one, which gives us seconds to the minus two. So the unit for acceleration is meters per second per second. So now I can put that in here, and I get the idea that the force, the derived quantity for force, is kilograms meters per second per second in SI base units. And the crucial thing is this is the derived quantity in SI base units. You should know that force has its own, because we use this quantity so often, has its own special derived quantity, which of course is the Newton. So one Newton is equal to one kilogram meter per second squared. Uh, another example of this um, is the equation for uh, work done. So work done, and remember work done is the same as energy. The equation for that is force multiplied by distance. Okay, so if I say the unit of work done, or the unit of energy, uh, now is going to be equal to the unit of force times the unit of distance. Now the unit of force, we could say, well force, we know the equation for force is F to M times A, and then work out the units of that and put it together, but we've just calculated what that is. So there's two ways I could write this. I could write this first of all, as that the unit of energy is a newton and the unit for me, uh, distance is obviously meters but i could also that is a derived quantity but it isn't an si base unit because a newton is not an si base unit so then what i could do is i'd have to break down what is a newton equal to and i'd then have to go well force that is equal to the unit of m and the unit of a right because that's the equation of force mass times acceleration and then i would do this process that we've done here and I could then say that uh, rather than putting a newton that one newton is the same in SI base units is a kilogram times a meter per second per second times now a meter because that section here is the derived quantity for force this ma uh, meters here is the distance from the distance there so I put that together and I get that the unit of energy or work done is kilogram meters squared because that is meters to the one and that is meters to the one so i can put that together seconds to the minus two also known as the joule so the unit of energy is the joule it always has been a joule but a joule shown in si base units is equal to this so that just gives you a brief overview of the seven si base units that you should know and how to go through the process of working out a derived unit and what that means and you'll have to use this skill to show that equations are homogeneous and to work out uh, derived units for a whole variety of different uh, equations.